So we're going to solve equilibrium first. So here we have our different prices, our different quantity demands, and our different quantity supplied. So as the price gets larger, people are willing to sell more. But as the price gets larger, people demand less. So the first thing we want to do is solve for our demand equation and our supply equation so that we can find the equilibrium quantity and price. So pause your YouTube video now and go ahead and try and solve for equilibrium. Alright, and we're back. So, hopefully you remembered that you needed to use the formula y equals mx plus b to solve for a line. m equals our slope, it's rise over run, y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1, and b is our y-intercept. So the first thing I need to do is I need to solve for slope. So I come back to my raw data and I need to pick any two data points. So I chose a dollar fifty and a dollar. And this is the data point that goes with that. So when I solve for my demand equation, I'll plug that in. This is my y2 minus y1. And this will be my x2 minus x1. So here is my answer for slope. See how my slope is a negative sign? Demand is a downward sloping line. Our demand is downward sloping. So it will always be a negative so long as our demand is downward sloping. Once I have slope, now I want to solve for b. So I'm going to choose one of these points to plug in for P and Q, and I already have M. So I have my P equals MQ plus B. I plug in these three values, and now I need to solve for B. I'll end up with B equals 6. Now that I have my M and my B, I have my demand equation. So I'm going to get P equals negative 0.05Q plus 6. We're going to do the exact same thing for supply. If you haven't done supply already, pause and try and do it yourself. Okay. So here's my supply equation. Again, step one, solve for M. So pick any two points. Okay. So I'm going to use a, a dollar, a dollar fifty, and I'm going to use the 70 and 75. So it'll be my x2 and my x1. I'll plug those in to solve for my equation for slope. I'll have a $1.50 minus 1 divided by 75 minus 70 equals 0 0.1. This is my answer for slope. Now that I have slope, I need to solve for b. So I'm going to plug in a P and a Q. It can be any P and its corresponding Q. So I use a dollar and 70. And I'm going to solve for B. So I'm going to have B equals a negative 6 now. Now I have my M and my B. I plug that into my supply equation. So I have a P equals 0.1Q plus the negative 6. Now that I have my demand and my supply equation, I want to set these equal to each other and solve for Q. And the Q that we're actually solving for is our equilibrium quantity. So here I have my two equations. I set them equal and I solve for Q star equals 80. Once I have Q star equals 80, I want to take this Q and I want to plug it back into uh, this equation or I could plug it into this equation and solve for P. And the P star will be, I'll take the 80 times 0.1, which is 8, 
8 plus a negative 6, 2. So P star equals 2. So now I've solved for equilibrium quantity and price from the raw data. Let's go back and look at our raw data in this example. Just looking at this example, I want to know where does my supply and demand meet? Okay. So we said that it's 80 and $2. If I look at this chart, I can see that at $2, the demand is 80 and the supply was 80. So we can see in the chart that our math was correct. We correctly found equilibrium. The next thing we're going to talk about is the cobweb model. Okay. So cobweb is the Spider-Man shoots from his hand. And the, the way that the cobweb model works for a commodity is if you were to think of a farmer. Uh, one season, the farmer has a drought and isn't able to grow that much. So he's willing to supply this amount. Though this is our equilibrium, eh, that'd be my P star and my Q star. At this amount, this supply, this is what people are willing to pay. When the farmer gets this price and it's time for him to, gr to grow his crop the second season, in this model he's only, he only has a memory back one season. And he remembers, oh last season I got this nice high, high price. At this price, the farmer would like to supply this amount. Okay. At this amount, at this price, will have less demand. Okay. Our demand will be there. Yeah. So the cobweb model is just one season to the next. And we're getting closer and closer to our equilibrium. Yeah. So that's how the cobweb model works. The next part we're going to work, work on is for uh, advanced for macroeconomics. So this is a one commodity case if our farmer was just selling rice. But what if we have two commodities? Okay. So with the advanced format, you're going to realize there's a couple things different than what we just previously discussed. Uh, for one thing, my Q is what equals price instead of price equaling, equaling quantity. This makes more sense this way, that price determines our quantity, not our quantity determining our price. These are what are known as our explanatory variables. independent variables. And this would be our dependent variable. This depends upon these amounts. That's our dependent variable. We can get these equations the same way in our previous example. But now we have P1 and P2. So we're doing two commodities. So I have a QD1, a QS1, a QD2, and a QS2. So th this is going to be for one commodity, and these two equations for another commodity. So if we think about this for a second, uh, let's say this is wine, and this is beer. So. What QD1 is saying, the quantity demand for wine depends on the price of wine and the price of beer. Which may be more realistic once you've learned about uh, complements and substitutes and how they can impact the 
demand. So beer and wine in this example would be, they would be substitutes. So if the price were to go up for beer, then the quantity demand for wine would also go up. So we have a positive sign. If the price for wine were to go up, then the quantity demand for wine would go down. So we have a negative sign. And so we're dealing with substitutes. And the same thing works for beer. The quantity demand for beer depends upon the price of the price of beer and wine. This would be my wine. And this would be my beer. So once we have our four equations, what we want to do is we want to find these six variables. What we're going to do is we're going to take the variables from the equations and minus them from each other. So I have a 10 and a negative 2. So it's coming from here. And then I have a negative 2 minus 3. So we're using this information. And then I have a 1 minus 0. We're going to use this data. And so there's nothing there, so we have a 0. Okay. For my next two equations, I'm going to take 15 minus a negative 1. So we're going to use this value here and this value here. And then I have a 1 minus 0. So we're using these two values here. 1 minus a nothing. And then lastly, I'm going to have a negative 1 minus 2. So I'm using this value minus 2. So this is the format, the structure for how we get those six variables. Once we have those six variables, we're going to plug them in and solve for P star. So these are the equations we would use. We would just plug them in and solve. Once we have P star, we're then going to be able to plug that in and solve for Q, back into our original equation. So go ahead and pause the video now. And when we come back, you'll have the answer. But try and solve first by yourself. We're back. So I plug in and solve for P star 1. We should have 3 and 5 sevenths. Or you may have the decimal. That's fine. Once I have P star equals 1, I'll p plug that back into my original equation for P1. For P star 2, I'll get 6 and 4 sevenths. And I'll take this value and plug that back in for P2. Once I plug my P star 1 and my P star 2 back into the original equation, I can then solve for Q star. So I can plug it back into either my demand or my supply equation. It doesn't matter. And I'm going to get a Q star 1 of 9 and 1 7th and a Q star 2 of 12 and 1 7th. So if I didn't have the equations, how do I get these equations? We would have to collect data on price and quantity demand for good one, quantity supply for good one, and quantity demand for good two, and quantity supply for good two. And we would want to then use our data and solve using multiple regression to get our coefficients and get our values. So, if you haven't taken a stats 2 class, you'll want to look up multiple regression. If you don't already have the equations. So that's it for equilibrium. Thank you.